Okay, in the last video we looked at what's called the slope-intercept form, which is a line written as y equals mx plus b. As a quick reminder, it's just called slope and intercept form because we know the slope and the intercept, and we highlight those two things in this formula. In this video, we're going to look at another formula and talk about you know what's the idea behind it and why it makes sense. This is called the point-slope formula, and it's written as y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And this is not, you know, this is called point and slope because, well, it highlights the slope. Notice we're not highlighting the intercept here, but this x1 and y1, those two things come from the point that we're given. So this formula is going to be useful when we're given a slope and we're given a point. I'm just going to put a bubble around it, but that's a little distracting. And this other formula, the one in the last video, the slope-intercept, is useful when we know the slope and the intercept. That's the basic idea. So we're going to focus here on this. Um, why the point and slope formula? Where does it come from and how do we use it? Okay, let's start with the basic idea. Uh, the, the idea is that you're given the slope and the point, and, and, a, and a point on the line. What does the line look like, and what are other points on the line? So how do we do this? Well, let's pick an arbitrary point. Let's pick the point 10, 5, and let's call it A. So A equals 10, 5. Oops, that didn't come out. A equals 10, 5. So that's our point. So again, we know a point. Oops, we know a point. That point is 10, 5, right? Now let's pick a slope. Well, our slope can be anything we want it to be, but I'm going to have it go up one increment here, which is 5, and over three increments on the x, which is 15. Now since slope is delta y over delta x, if we're going up 5, that's our delta y, our delta x is 15, that's 5 over 15, or 1 over 3. And again, this just means that, that if I go up 1 and over 3, I'll get the next point on the line. I'm going to use this right here because it's very useful on the grid, right? Because if I was given 1 over 3 and I had this grid in front of me with increments of 5, an increment is just how far apart each of these values are, I'd want to know what's my slope in terms of 5s. So how many 5s? Well, 5 over 15 works nicely. So let's use it. And the idea, again, is that from a point and the slope, we can create a line. Here's how we do it. We know the slope's 5 over 15. So I'm going to go up 5, use my line tool, different color, up 5 and over 15. And that will give us the next point on the line. We could have gone backwards if we wanted to. We could go right down 5 and over this way 15, right? We can keep doing that, down 5 over, down 5 and until we get off the grid. Or we can keep going up this way, right, to take us right off the grid. The point is that the slope quickly helps us draw the line that we want to represent. We have a point and a slope. Now if we connect these dots, right, we have our line. And that's our line right here. So we're able to do that. The cool thing about this formula is that, that we can do the same process, but without a graph, right? We can represent this line if we're only given the slope and a point. So let's look at how that happens. So what am I going to do? Do I have room? Yeah, let me clear up a little bit of this right here. We don't need this chunk. Okay, so first of all, where does this formula come from, the point and slope formula? Well, you can derive it really quickly if you look at the fact that well, a slope, again, slope is just delta y over delta x, right? And delta y over delta x, you can think of it as, instead of, we typically write y2, and this, I'm sorry, let me use a different pen. And here it is, it's better. m is equal to delta y over delta x. And typically, this is written as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But really, we only have one point, right? So our point, 10, 5, is our only point we have, and that's just x1, y1. So we only, have, we only have one point. What do we do? 
Well, we can still think about the slope, right? Because instead of saying y2 and x2, let's just say y and x. In other words, any other point on the line. Not a specific one like we're given here, but any point x, y. So we have another point x, comma y. So now what's going to happen? Well, instead of x2 and, and, and x1 and y2 and y1, specific points that we have, we have a general point to work with. If we rewrite that, m will equal y minus y1 and x minus x1. And I don't know if you see it already, there's a little bit of algebra here, but this is really the point slope formula. How? Well, Let's clear off this chunk up here, the slope-intercept form. And we can write up here. This is the slope-intercept. Oh, slope. <laughs> this is the point-slope formula. Because now, and I'll rewrite it. Again, m equals, put it over a little bit, m equals y minus y1 over x minus x1. Well, if I multiply both sides by x minus x1, what will happen? Well x minus x1, whatever it is, here we're multiplying and dividing by it, so you're dividing by itself, so that cancels out. And right here is the slope point formula. So the idea is that this formula, can, if you plug the values in that you're given, you can, at the slope, you can actually figure out stuff about this line. Here's how it'll work here. You're given this point, 10, 5, and the slope, 1 over 3, or 5 over 15. We plug into the formula. We have x minus x1, which is 10, we're using this point right here, times m equals y minus y1. And y1 here is just this 5. So y minus 5. Let me clear this off now. Keep going. It depends how they ask you this in, in whatever you're doing, but because it can, you know, they might be looking for several different things. But here we can go further. We can just we can plug in our slope, and actually let me plug that in right here. What's our slope of this line? Well, it's one third or five over fifteen. I'm going to use um, one over three. Reduced form. So now we can distribute the one third to ten and x, and that gives us what? Well, one third times x is just one third x, minus ten over three, or one third times ten. And that equals y minus 5. And here, if we add 5 to both sides, we get what? We'll add 5 here, add 5 to this side. Well, this is going to cancel out, right? Negative 5 and 5 is 0. So now we have to add 5 to this side. And, and be careful here. This is really minus 10 thirds, or you can think of it as negative 10 thirds plus 5. Well, what's 5 in terms of thirds? Well, it's 15 thirds is 5. Or 15 over 3, 15 divided by 3 is 5. Add up these two, and what do we get? Well, 15 plus negative 10, right? We're adding negative fractions here. That's just 5, right? Over 3 is what? Well, 3 goes into 5 once with 2 thirds of a remainder left over, right? So it's really 1.6 repeating. That's our y-intercept. So notice, we started with, with the point-slope form, and plugging in the, the numbers we're given, we're able to rewrite all of this as this form. Do you recognize this? This is y equals mx plus b. And you can see there's our b value. The y-intercept is about 1 and 2 thirds right here. That's our b value. So we can convert between these two by just manipulating the algebra and using the distributive property. So there's definitely a connection here between point slope and slope intercept. And they both have their advantages and disadvantages. I like the point slope as well because you can start with a point and a slope and just build the line from there. And then you can manipulate it and do whatever you want. I just wanted to show you how to work with the formula right here. And if they ask you anything like what's the y-intercept, you know, given this point and slope, um, well, you can plug it into the point slope formula, which you don't have to memorize. It's just built from what you know about slope plug it in, solve it, and look at it, and then rewrite it and evaluate it until you get a y equals mx plus b format, and you can tell what the, what the y-intercept is as well. So 
Using either format, we can solve and evaluate these lines.